Yeah, hey, uh, my name is Callan Patmore. I'm from Canada, Lloydminster. My expectations for the conference this year was to hear from God to really speak to me and show me kind of what the whole conference, what our whole fellowship is about. Because things are clicking more and more. I'm starting to see the vision more and more. And I just want to fully see what God has in store for our fellowship. Um, I would like to see a church planted, and I know this may be a biased answer, but I would like to see one planted back home in the prairies. I, I know a lot of people back home say they don't need God, but everybody needs God, and uh, yeah, I would like one to see one planted in the prairies that like, we're really spaced out and far apart from each other. So uh, like the closest place would be like Red Deer, which uh, I don't know, is like 15 minutes away, or 15 minutes away. But yeah, that'd be sweet to see one planted there. Hi, my name's uh, Andrew Hutchinson. I'm from Federal Way, Washington. My expectations from this conference is uh, just going back with a fire, ready to save uh, souls and preach the gospel to people that haven't heard it. And the lost souls, our city has a lot of hurt people, a lot of uh, people from around the world. And it's just, I just want to reach all of them. A lot of uh, Samoans, actually. So for me, that's the kind of have a, have a place in my heart. I would like to see a church planted uh, here in Arizona, Surprise, uh, it's close to Phoenix. I have some family there and they've actually been looking for a church. Uh, my name is Carlo Vitale. I am from Gallup, New Mexico. I am looking forward to at conference a, a powerful move of God and also a more deep connection with Him. Uh, where would I like to see a church planted? Ooh, I don't know. Israel, another church in Israel, that would be, be kind of cool to see. My name is Hallie Morales. I'm from Casa Grande, Arizona. I'm looking the most forward to getting um, in this conference breakthrough, direction, guidance, help. <laughs> I would most like to see a church get planted in Delano, California. My name is Dwayne Gibson. I am from the West Las Vegas Church. I'm looking forward to getting direction, uh, just a lot of wisdom. Uh, this is uh, an important conference for me. I love always coming down here, being from Pastor Lamb's church. This is really special for me. So I just love hearing just direction, really. Uh, even though I reside in Las Vegas, Detroit is my hometown, born and raised. I want to see more churches in Detroit. And honestly, I want to see more churches in Las Vegas as well. Re it's a huge city, needs more. My name is Antonio. I am from the Logan, Utah church. Uh, I'm looking for wisdom and stuff to apply to my life. Especially since I'm a young man, I want to be able to learn how to grow in the things of God and learn how to become a man that I should become and just be able to support my family and just be an example to everyone else around me. Um, I would like to see a church be planted in Cuba or Puerto Rico because uh, my pastor, uh, he would want to send one out there and so hopefully one day I could be sent out.
My name is Anna. My name is Alicia. We go to the Glendale Church under Pastor Renz and Rhonda. Honestly, I'm just happy to be here. Conference is always such a fun time. It's so unlifting, and we always go back to our home church so on fire. So it's just nice to be here. I would like to see a church be planted in Japan. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Malachi Mendoza. I'm from Pastor Renz in Glendale, Arizona. This conference, I'm looking forward to uh, getting a revelation from Jesus Christ. I'd like to see a church planted in North Korea this year. My name is Xavier Tyrell. I am from Pastor Rand's Church in Glendale, Arizona. Um, what I'm looking forward to get most out of this conference is more of just the desire for God and desire for prayer and reading once again. Uh, I would like to see a church planted in Ukraine. Yes, my name is Miguel Perez. I'm from the church at Northeast San Antonio with Pastor Benny Rodriguez. Well, definitely this conference, I'm believing God to continue stirring a faith, a new fire, fresh fire, and see God, you know, just touch my heart. I want to go back different. I don't want to go back the same. I just want to believe God for great things. Definitely, I believe, uh, I would like to see a church be planted in Japan. I know currently we have two churches there, and a lot of them are not Christians, and I believe God uh, there's a harvest there, and I believe God can do such a powerful work where they, wherever the gospel is preached, people uh, can get saved.
If you begin to find your seats this evening, sing that song, My Redeemer Lives, as we clap tonight. I know he rescued my soul. His blood had covered my sin. I believe. as we sing echo in Jesus name as we clap tonight you move the mountains you move the mountains toll the wind and waves be still you cast out demons the empty soul be filled. Now there's breakthrough. Now there's freedom in your name. You gave us power and the keys to do the same. You hold redemption. Made accusers drop their stones. Showed us mercy. breakthrough now there's freedom in your name you gave us power and the keys to do sin now we proclaim in Jesus name walls fall down in Jesus name strongholds break in Jesus name amen There are miracles in Jesus' name. Pour them out in Jesus' name. Amen. You crush the darkness. You crush the darkness. Made a full of death and grave. Oh, King Jesus, you make royals out of slaves. Now there's breakthrough, now there's freedom in your name. You gave us power and the keys. 
Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. What a wonderful presence of God in this place tonight. We want to open our service in prayer, have some needs we want to lift up before the conference body. We want to pray for Pastor Anthony Primacero, is, uh, has pneumonia, is in the hospital, needs healing right now in his body. We want to pray for Jensen Kreps from Yukon, Oklahoma, five-year-old. His temperature rises. When it rises, he passes out. Doctors are trying to figure out why. They believe it's a cardiac issue. We want to pray for him tonight. We want to lift up Pastor Lamont Melrose, his granddaughter. Her name is Olivia, five years old. She's been sick for three years, needs a miracle, is back in the hospital. We want to believe God right now for a supernatural healing in her body. But we want to, before we pray and lift up this service tonight, anointing upon Pastor Greg Mitchell, we want to share some victory reports because we serve a miracle working God. We had a pastor's wife in the Philippines. She'd been enduring uh, uh, atopic dermatitis and eczema and skin allergy for years, been to many doctors, but the rashes from the disease persisted, spread to uh, throughout her body, especially on her face. But praise God, after Pastor Greg's prayer and calling out uh, this, that same night, immediately all the itchiness stopped, and the next day suddenly healed. <clears throat> No rashes, the skin, completely normal. Thank you, Jesus. Pastor's wife in Australia had been experiencing some pain recently and went uh, for an ultrasound, was diagnosed with an ovarian cyst. She was believing God for a miracle, but watched Monday night of the conference. Pastor Greg called out, anyone with growths, please stand and pray. She stood and believed that there would be healing, woke up the next morning feeling completely pain-free, went back for a second ultrasound. You can put this picture up. The cyst has completely disappeared. She is 100% pain-free. God has done a miracle. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. How many tonight, you have a need right now in your life, in your body, you'd lift your hand. We're going to join together in prayer. You lift up your need before God. Uh, let's pray for this final night of our conference. Then Pastor Willis Gordon from San Antonio, Texas is going to pray. Hallelujah. Father God, we thank you, Lord, that we have access to your throne of grace. We take dominion and authority right now over every infirmity, all sickness, and disease and injury. We rebuke it in the name of Jesus Christ. By the power of the blood of Jesus Christ, healing virtue. Father God, we commit this service to you tonight. Have right of way, Father God. Anointing upon Pastor Greg as he ministers. Lord God, have right of way in our hearts. And in our hearts. Hallelujah. Father, we come before you tonight, God. We are a desperate people, God. 
God, we ask, oh God, that you shall move in this service again, God. Lord, and we come, God, with our hearts open to you tonight, God. Lord, we believe you that you are Jehovah Rapha. God, that you will bring healing and deliverance to every need that is brought before your throne, God. God, I pray, God, that hearts shall be open and we shall respond, oh God, in obedience to your word, God. God, we humble ourselves before you, God, that you may be glorified tonight, God, that you will launch forth, God, God, a people, God, Lord, couples into the nations of the land. And we come in obedience and humility and believe you, God, that you are going to move powerfully tonight, God. We thank you, Father, for all that you have done this week, God, and what you're going to do. Anoint our pastor, God, with his word, oh God, shall move and challenge us. And we thank you, God, and we give you praise in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Amen. You can be seated this evening. We want to welcome you out to our final night of our winter 2024 conference. Hallelujah. We're looking forward to this tremendous service. Just some announcements. Our Spanish radios. If you checked out a Spanish interpretation radio, please return it to the Spanish booth immediately after the service. Seat labels for those who have had reserved seats. You can leave those labels on the chairs. Our cleaning crew will t get those later. Lost and found at the guest services in the main lobby. Please take a look there on your way out. Make sure you've left nothing behind. For our giving, online giving, we have the Secure Give app. Uh, we can, you can also give through our website, prescottpottershouse.com. You can also text uh, you're giving tonight. You can text CF for conference Friday. Then the amount, if you're giving in person, checks can be made to the Potter's House. For the local area, the local congregation, or if you are staying over after conference, tomorrow we are going to have our Saturday uh, 180 concert. This happens at 7 p.m. at our new location, 6050 East, State Route 69. So please take note of that, 7 p.m., our Saturday concert. Then, if you are in the local area, Sunday we're going to have some special services. We're going to have Pastor Daryl Elliott ministering and then Pastor Juan Pablo Cargo in the evening. And we encourage you to be part of that this Sunday. We want to say thank you tonight to many as you have come and been recipients of this tremendous week. It takes a lot of people to be able to help run a conference and uh, make this all possible. If you will hold the applause until the end of the list, we just want to highlight uh, some names and some teams tonight. We want to thank Bill Bronson and Ed Kidwell, all the delegate planning and accommodation that goes into preparations for this, all of our check-in team. We want to thank Pastor Jonathan Heimberg, all the conference printing and the conference video. We want to thank Gary Riley and all of his tech team, uh, keeping things running smoothly uh, uh, throughout the week. Pastor Stephen Cassio, as he oversees all the screens, sound and visual, our video and live stream team. We want to thank our security team, led by Brian Renz, our medical team, led by Isaac Solano. We want to thank our refreshment team, uh, led by Lana DeAngelis. We want to thank our sound team, led by Neil Mitchell. Our guest services team, led by Joel and Jeannie Morrison. All of our ushers and our counting team, led by Bob and Sharon Allen. We want to thank our musicians and our platform singers, led by Brian DeBloy. All of our cleaning team, after you leave, they spend long hours, led by Debbie Kays. Our Spanish interpreters, led by Diego, Pastor Diego Galvan and Alan Bonillas. We want to thank our photographers, led by Brianna Gabaldon. Our media kiosk, led by Randy Foster and Tina Hessenauer. All of our nursery and child care team, led by Rachel Keppel. We want to thank our children's church workers, led by Mike and Liz DeRoyce. We want to thank our parking lot team, led by Pastor Chris Hart and Pete Davis. We want to thank our conference speakers, as they have had the mind of God this week, all of our MCs. We want to thank our area police officers. We want to thank our Prescott staff, the, uh, Pastor Diego Galvan, Pastor Cassio, Pastor Hart, uh, Pastor Matt Sanderlin. We want to thank especially Pastor Greg in this cold week 
that we are in such a beautiful facility to enjoy a week of conference and hear from God. Amen. Let's say thank you to all of these workers tonight. Amen. And thank you to all who have joined us here this week. This is a people's conference, as Pastor Wayman Mitchell had often said. Your pastor, disciple, couples, you came and joined us here. You've joined us online. You've helped us to pray. You've partnered with us in giving. We thank you on behalf of the Prescott Potter's House and the staff to appreciate you. Amen. We're going to hear some reports now of what God is doing throughout our uh, churches, throughout the world. Each pastor is going to tell us their name, their wife's name, where they are pastoring, and all that God is doing. We're going to hear from these pastors in this order. Ramon Junco, Setson de Hanguapo, uh, Yui Dao, Matt Stoll, Eric Muyea, and Roberto Rojo. Let's welcome Ramon Junco. Good evening. My name is Ramon Junco with my ever supportive and amazing wife, Sheng. And we were sent to Bangkok, Thailand, out of Davao City, Philippines. I'd like to report to you some of the highlights of what God has been doing. Our main outreach tool is free English classes. But the good thing is we are teaching the Bible. We have one Thai student who had been gone for years. Last month, he sent me a message and told me that the reason why he disconnected from us because he just wanted to work and work and work. He thought that money would make him happy, but he got so depressed and he wanted to take his life. He remembered the church and he reached out on us. He realized that Jesus is all he needs. He decided to come back to church this time not to learn English and not because of the food, but because he wants to serve God. Amen. He got water baptized and is now faithfully coming to church and supporting the church financially. There is one type person, he's an orphan who came to church. He is 21 years old. He had not met his parents since birth. He had no family. He had been suffering from depression and had been involved in deep drug addiction and prostitution. We reached out on him, we prayed for him, and he received deliverance. Now, he has church that he can call his own family. He's now faithfully helping us in the translation for our weekend outreaches. Amen. Last August, Pastor Arvin Latreno from the Philippines visited us for a revival. He brought us his whole family of musicians, and we had a two-night of a revival concert, and we saw five souls got saved. Amen. Last October, we had Pastor Boyet de Cepeda visited us for a weekday of revival. Amazingly, many people showed up on weekdays. Many were stirred up and encouraged. We received healings. We received words of knowledge and all three nights were spirit-filled. And one highlight of that revival was one lady had been suffering from total deafness in her left ear for 19 years and she was instantly healed. Amen. She came back the following night and got baptized by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Last month, 18 church members went to the province to hold an English camp and Christmas concert. We went to a Thai Buddhist school that really has no idea what is Christmas. We're able to explain what Christmas is all about. We're able to evangelize. Amen. And out of the two days of outreach, 76 precious Buddhist souls got saved. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Last December 31, we were able to baptize five precious souls. As of today, we have four churches in Thailand and one more coming this month. And for the very first time out of Bangkok, Thailand, in partnership with my mother church in Davao City, Philippines, we were able to plant our first international work in Vientiane, Laos. Amen. I would like to thank Pastor Greg Mitchell, Pastor Boyet Disipida, Pastor Mark... And to my pastor, Pastor Frank Buenaventura, and all Mindanao churches, thank you for all your love and support. God bless you all. My name is Setson, my wife, Mary. We are laboring in the great nation of Namibia. South London is our mother church, and uh, we've been uh, laboring now for 19 years. So we thank God for what he has uh, been doing and what he's continuing doing in our outreaches. We have uh, seen uh, 
great response uh, in uh, our school Bible studies with many of these young people um, giving their life to Jesus Christ. Our conference in March, we have planted five uh, new national works. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And um, we had uh, Pastor Ajala come to uh, do a revival. In that revival, we have seen uh, 70 people give their life to Jesus Christ, and the church was greatly encouraged. We had, um, um, in um, the last water baptism, we have baptized 42 precious souls in water. Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. And um, we also had a privilege to have uh, Pastor Greg Mitchell um, this um, November come and minister. This was a, a, a wide nation rally in which uh, uh, many, many people have been helped, our churches uh, and the pastors, uh, and 27 people in that, in that time uh, prayed uh, to give their life to Jesus Christ. Uh, many got healed. Uh, we thank God uh, for that uh, time. Okay, and so um, a lot has happened, uh, and I wanted to understand that God is doing something great. We have people who are very enthusiastic, people who are willing to go out and preach the gospel. And so I want to appreciate uh, the, the following uh, people who made an impact in my life. My pastor, Pastor Fred Ruby, great man, great leader. I want to appreciate uh, Pastor Peter Ajala. He's been the longest uh, pastor uh, in my life and ministry for his uh, support and grace and love. I want to appreciate uh, uh, Pastor Steve Anderson, who have pioneered the church. I want to appreciate uh, Pastor Warner and the Tucson Church uh, for planting uh, the work uh, in Namibia. I want to appreciate uh, Pastor uh, Greg Mitchell for his leadership, his investment uh, in our lives. Uh, I want to appreciate uh, my wife uh, for laboring uh, with me uh, and for supporting me all the years uh, that we've been there. I want to thank everybody else who has uh, prayed for us and supported us uh, uh, all this uh, time of labor. Love you all. God bless you. Amen. Good evening, everybody. My name is Yui. My wife is Hoang Vung, and with two boys, we pastor in the church in District 3, Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam. My pastor, Pastor Boy, is And this is the first time I am uh, I'm in the United States and the Prescott Bible Conference. And our church, <laughs> our church has been established uh, since 2012. And by Pastor Remil, who was sent out from Manila, Philippines, and we took over the church uh, in se September 2019, and we have been there on this year. We have seen people, they like have been changed, men, women, experienced about God, and say became born again Christian, and, see, uh, and the sinner got healed and delivered, not by the power of men, but by, uh, by the power of, uh, power of God. And even though Vietnam, we cannot go out and give the flyer, and even though Vietnam, we cannot do door by door witnessing, and, and we cannot do concert and, uh, and movie night in the public display, but God made a way. Uh, by the little slope, we continue to gather people, preach the gospel, so God can say, and the disciples are raising up, couple, uh, couple respond to the call of God, and we send them out. In 2019, we sent out the first couple, and now we have two daughter church uh, in Vietnam, and one missionary in Finland. Okay, God bless us so far. And in June 2022, we are able to have our leader to come uh, uh, for the very, very first rally in Vietnam. And last 2023, we did it again. And there's many great miracles that got done in this year. There was a couple in our church, the wife, uh, she, she had a, tu uh, a tubal pregnancy. The doctor said that she, she should not keep the baby and first will be dangerous for the wife. Uh, and they have to make decision. Uh, the husband called me, but I don't know uh, what I'm going to say to them. I just told them that, like, uh, don't make any decision yet. Just like, let me live in God. Uh, they trust God. We pray for them. And the next day, the husband called me again. And he said that the baby already jumped into the right place. And even the doctor, <laughs> he cannot explain like, how, it can, how it happened. Um, a few months ago, the baby was born healthy. 
uh, last August also we had the revival healing crusade with the evangelist Steve Sabata. There was a man who has uh, lung cancer and he has still also uh, on white painful even though with daily medical uh, med uh, medicine and uh, chemical treatment mainly. Uh, he have to travel around eight hours uh, to go to our church and that's the first time he attended the church event. The first time also he was born for the sinner prayer and after that Pastor Steve prayed for him and after the prayer the band gone and he also even went to the hospital to do the check up, uh, check up again and the doctor said that he had no problem with his lung and he had, uh, had been totally healed by God. Um, we would like to say thank you to Pastor Bart, Pastor Sissy Clark, Pastor Ray Miche for your leadership, the Mandalorian Church, the uh, Guam congregation for your prayer, for your supporting, and the Breast Coast Church. If there is no foreigner, no willingness to go out and facilitate to give uh, and to support, then there will be no Vietnamese to stand here tonight, uh, born, uh, uh, Vietnamese born again Christian to stand here tonight to give the report. And thank you so much. Uh, God bless. God. My name is Matt Stoll. My wife, Sarah, and I are pioneering in the city of Syracuse, New York. And uh, with our three children, I want to first of all say that I'm grateful to uh, my wife and my children for partnering with me. They are a great blessing and uh, could not do it without you, all of you. And I want to also say thank you to the Rochester congregation who sent us out, Pastor Sullivan and his wife, Carrie, for their uh, support and prayers and timely advice and counsel that is a great blessing to us. It's our privilege to represent our fellowship in Syracuse. And I'll just give you a few highlights from this year. We began the year finally finding a suitable building for us to meet in. And uh, as we tried to get approvals for that, we learned that there was someone on the town council that was absolutely opposed to our church being in that location. And they were working behind the scenes trying to turn the rest of the planning board and the village board against us. And so we began to pray against that and God had a plan. I was frustrated. God had it all figured out all along. This person succeeded in getting our approvals delayed for two meetings, two months in a row. And uh, finally, uh, I was able to get some favor with the mayor and with some wise advice from uh, Pastor Keith Sullivan, uh, able to get her on our side. She said, listen, you're not on the agenda for this next meeting, but I'm going to bring it up anyway. And so she did. We had no idea the person that was opposing us that would have been the canceling vote was on vacation that week. God had it all figured out. We got approved and we opened up in May, praise God. Uh, we did a grand opening revival with Pastor Sullivan in May, or in July, I should say, and uh, had a good time, had visitors, had one young man get saved, got uh, radically saved during that revival, began coming to church faithfully. And then I, I found out he had to go back to prison and finish his sentence. Uh, but then I remembered somebody had said something about Pastor Mitchell saying the key to good disciples is they have to go to prison first. So I was encouraged. I said, let's do it. Go do your time. Let's do that. He went, he's in. I went to visit him. He said, please send me a Bible. He started going to their Bible studies and their, their services in prison. He's emailing, asking questions. Can't wait to get out and get back with us in church. Very encouraging. And so we're looking forward uh, to all that God's going to do in his life. Um, we've seen God do several notable healings this year. We had a woman come in, uh, had uh, a metal in her spine and her back from accidents, uh, prayed for her, totally healed, pain-free, uh, had another man in the mall that we ran into on outreach. I said, you look like you're in pain. Can I pray for you? He said, I had gunshot wounds. I've got scar tissue 26 years ago. Been in pain ever since. Prayed for him. Tears coming down his face. Totally healed. Um, had another lady rheumatoid arthritis. Um, and because of the pain, her and her husband said, we're not having any more kids. Um, prayed for her. She got healed. She said, we're going to try again. God is moving. We've had people get filled with the Holy Ghost. Um, saved recently. And we're God's going to do in the coming year. Please pray for us. Thank you. Amen. My name is Eric Muyea. I'm married to Clementina Muyea or Mama Tracy. That's the way we address each other. Mama Tracy, Baba Tracy over there in Africa uh, for the last 34 years. Uh, 23 years ago, he took over the church from Pastor John McCarthy. And uh, God has been helping us. Just a few highlights from uh, uh, last year. Um, there's a lady in our church uh, that came to me the year before that and said, uh, Pastor, I've been diagnosed with uh, cancer in my belly, stage four. 
And so she, uh, we began praying for this lady. She went for treatment. Uh, we kept on praying for her. And eventually she came back and she said, uh, uh, the doctor gave her a report which she showed me. She was healed completely, totally free from cancer. <laughs> Amen. Uh, we announced that in the church. But then some people began to say, how can she give such a testimony so quickly? You know, cancer comes back. She needs to take some time. You know, some people are not very good in the church, all right? Uh, so, <laughs> so uh, we kept quiet, uh, and a year went by, and she took another test uh, at the beginning of uh, uh, around March last year, and she was still totally healed. And we thank God for that. Uh, amen. Uh, uh, April last year, we launched out a church that we had prayed for at the Nairobi conference. Uh, Pastor John Jiroge, he went, started the, uh, the church in his house, uh, and uh, his house got filled up with people. By the time we got a hold for this guy, uh, uh, um, he already had a group of people, about 20 people coming. Um, we got this hall, um, did a crusade, um, door to door, and we got about um, uh, 62 people saved, uh, and his church got filled immediately. And up to now, it's still filled. The wife has to stand outside, take pictures, uh, to do things like that. So we are looking for another building for him. In May, we had another crusade. Um, uh, door to door, 86 people saved in Augusta. Pastor John McCarthy came for us uh, and for the Nairobi conference, uh, and he brought me the book uh, uh, um, Healing Power by uh, our pastor, Pastor Greg Mitchell. That book has totally transformed my healing ministry, and I'm beginning to see a lot of healings, uh, and we thank God for that. Uh, uh, in August, that same August, we sent out another church, uh, Pastor Peterson Kilasi. He's getting ready. To, as soon as I go back, uh, we are sending him out. Uh, in September, we had another crusade, uh, 75 people saved. Uh, in October, we had a powerful, powerful revival uh, with Pastor Paki Raj. In India, we have, in Kenya, we have lots of Indians, but they never get saved. So for the people to hear there was an Indian pastor from India coming to preach, that brought in a lot of people, and then his wife put on her sari, stood at the gate, gave out flyers. People couldn't believe it. We had a record turnout, and God moved. And this last December, we had a crossover service. 15 people got saved. Thank you so much, Pastor McCarthy, Pastor Greg Mitchell. God bless you. Um, and last report, I've been sick all week. Ah, thank you, Pastor Yesi. <laughs> my name is Roberto Rojo, my wife Carmen, and we were sent out uh, in July 2021 uh, to Mazatlan, Mexico. And the last six months uh, has been very exciting for us. People are like getting safe, making decisions for God in a supernatural way. One of the highlights, uh, we have been praying for a woman who diagnosed with breast cancer. All the church fasted three days for here, and the next week, the result was no cancer. She was totally healed. In August, we had our third baptism, and 13 people were baptized. Four months ago, we got a beautiful building for the church with a children's school, parking lot, and office for the pastor. Amen. Praise God. In the last six months, we had uh, three revivals with my pastor, Pastor Diego, Pastor Humberto Zaragoza, Pastor Juan de Dios Ramirez, and they have uh, been, been great a blessing for us. People are receiving the Holy Spirit, people are tithing, people are being faithful. Every service, they are praying in the morning, they testify, they all. <laughs> We now have serious men, serious men on the Sundays, and three men are becoming on disciples. We are preaching in the streets, doing music concerts in the parks. Last month we had a play about Christmas and raffle gift for the children. Six people were safe. Um, December 31, we had a Thanksgiving service for New Year, and I meant to the microphone and say, since I walked through the door of the church, my life has changed. Thank God for sending you to Mazatlan. In my mind, I say, thanks a lot, God, for these people. Beautiful people in Mazatlan. Now, in the church, we are between 35 and 50 people faithful. Let me tell you, God is moving in Mazatlan. I want to tell my pastor, Pastor Greg Mitchell, Pastor Diego Galvan, and my friend, Pastor, Pastor Jesse Morales, for their trust, for their love and support, for for a love. We love you, Prescott Church. Remember this, Mazatlan.
You remember? Mazatlán, México, pray for us, pray for Mazatlán, God bless you all. Amen. I am going to receive the final offering of this uh, very historic uh, conference, and I don't say that lightly. I say historic because things are being done through this conference that have not yet been done in terms of the churches planted, where they're planted, uh, uh, the people that are going to be reached, history is going to be made out of every one of our conferences. The Israeli government is very concerned, the citizens of Israel, and especially the family members of the hostages, are very, very concerned because as worldwide sentiment grows against Israel after this three, now three-month war began on October 7th, as this war has progressed, worldwide sentiment mounting against Israel, the propaganda coming out of Hamas and Gaza, that Israel are the bad guys, they're the ones perpetrating genocide, etc. They're very concerned that the hostages that were taken on October 7th that are currently still being held under extreme duress are going to be forgotten about. And so one of the efforts that the Israeli government made was to produce this video that I want you to observe right now. And in this video, they have achieved something that I want to challenge you to achieve this evening. Let's watch the video. Something incredible is achieved through that and was achieved through that. And my challenge for you is to discover whether or not we can achieve that here tonight. There isn't one person of that thousand member orchestra and choir that isn't fully invested in what they're doing. There's a cause. They're emotionally and spiritually and physically completely invested in a single cause. And for the moments that this video was being produced, they were completely unified. One heart, one mind, one single voice. When the temple was dedicated, I just read this in my devotional Bible reading this morning. The Bible says that it came to pass when the trumpeters and the singers were as one to make one sound to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord. A symphony orchestra is about harmony. It's about perfect unity 
everyone doing their part, nobody doing their own thing, in harmony with others. And in order to be part of something like that, you have to be committed, you have to be invested. In reading about symphony orchestras in general, the path toward becoming a member of an orchestra involves obtaining an advanced music education and receiving specialized training, and most importantly, not being concerned about your name being in the forefront. You're part of a whole. Many acting as one. A symphony orchestra is one sound, one voice, many musicians. And tonight, my inspiration is that you are God's symphony orchestra who has been gifted by God in a lot of different ways. We are going to scatter from this conference and literally go into all the world, back to our churches in our cities and nations, and continue preaching the gospel. New churches are going to be going into their venture for Christ, and we're unified in taking the gospel to the world. But the particular challenge for us tonight is to act as one, one voice, as we receive an offering to cover the finances of this conference. And the question is, can we achieve that kind of unity tonight? Everybody contributing, everybody participating, everybody is playing their istru- instrument with all their heart, with all they have. Your instrument tonight is your giving. Your instrument tonight are the resources that you have. Can we join together as a, about a 3,000 member symphony orchestra and produce a command performance that will give joy to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? In the book of Acts chapter 4, this is precisely what they achieved. The Bible says in Acts 4, 32, now the multitude of those who believed were of one heart and one soul. Neither did any say that any of the things which he possessed was his own, but they had all things common. And with great power, the apostles gave witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all, nor was there anyone among them who lacked. For all who were possessors of lands or houses sold them brought the proceeds of the things that were sold and laid them at the apostles' feet. And they distributed to each one as anyone had need. And Joseph, who was also named Barnabas by the apostles, a Levite of the country of Cyprus, having land, sold it and brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. We have a cause this evening. And the cause should pull all of our resources, our hearts, our attention, and our focus together so that we all act as one right now. Our resources are not our own. What, a, what an incredible statement that was. Probably two weeks before this, a week before this, a few days before this. They didn't view their possessions that way. They viewed their land and their houses and their bank account as their own. But as these thousands of people are getting saved and God is moving, all of a sudden a shift came in how they viewed their resources and their wealth and their personal possessions. And they began to think of them as what can be useful to meet the needs of these people that have gotten saved and given their lives to Christ. And I wonder if that shift can happen. We may view our resources tonight. Some of you may look at your bank account or a possession or some other element of your reason. This is mine. It's for me. But I wonder if that shift can happen tonight where we suddenly look at our church bank account, our personal bank account, not as our own, not for our own use, uh, our own uh, aggrandizement, our own advance, uh, but can we view our possession uh, and that which we have control of, can we begin to view that as for the commonwealth, for the good of the needs that are crying out to be met? And in this atmosphere, the Bible says there was no one who lacked. They did lack. But when they gathered together 
and God's symphony orchestra began to play in unison with one voice, and they gave. Every need was met. There was no lack. What an incredible miracle and an incredible atmosphere that describes. It was accompanied by great grace, great power, something God was pleased with. And the Bible says finally that they laid the money at the apostles' feet. Who can forget this picture? When Pastor Mitchell Sr. laid hands on our pastor, Greg Mitchell, and a supernatural transference occurred in that moment as the mantle of leadership began to weigh upon Pastor Greg, it was already there, but this was official. This was a supernatural dimension uh, as God put upon Pastor Greg, our pastor, uh, uh, the mantle of leadership. Uh, and it is under his oversight that we receive this offering, and it's noteworthy. Uh, the Bible there says that uh, they laid the money at the apostles' feet. Uh, I trust uh, Pastor Greg Mitchell uh, with any amount of resource that I can give into this offering tonight, because I know under his oversight, as was the case with Pastor Mitchell Sr., it's going to be well spent. Needs are going to be met. It's not going to be used for self. Uh, it is going to be used for the advance of the kingdom of God. I mentioned a command performance. That is when a king or a president or a prime minister requests a performance. I want this symphony orchestra to perform on this particular day in this particular place. It's called a command performance. And when that is requested and when that occurs, it is just that. It's a command. Everybody gets their act together and a venue is made available and the audience gathers together and all the musicians are there because the king is present. Well, tonight the king has requested a command performance by all of you. And here we are as God's symphony orchestra. We are to speak tonight with one voice. We are to take the instruments of our resources and our wealth and pull them together to meet the incredible needs of our conference. $600,000. We could raise that in one single offering tonight. There are pastors that you need that shift to occur. You may have wealth and resources. You could tap it to meet the need. And I'm praying that that shift would occur. God owns the cattle on a thousand hills. Whatever you give tonight, he can replenish tenfold. Can you say amen? And I am going to give with faith tonight. I am going to give tonight believing God. I want the Lord to look down at this command performance uh, and I want him to know uh, that Paul Stevens uh, did the very best that he could. He gave his best performance for the King of Kings and the Lord of glory. What can you do tonight? What will you do? Can we harness the unity that was achieved by this orchestra, by the church in the book of Acts, in Acts chapter 4 that I read about, because if we can, we are going to see great power loosed as we testify going from this place of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Let's give God praise as the ushers come. <laughs> Pastor, I'm challenging you. You are a primary member. You are a holder of resources and wealth. There are others here. It wouldn't be any problem for you to write a check for a thousand or five thousand or ten thousand. Tonight's offering is not last night's offering. If you want to give that, you can, but don't cheat the Lord. Tonight requires another offering of an extraordinary amount. There are various ways of giving. You can take out your device right now and lay hands on that device. Amen. God, you speak to me about what the king expects of me in this command performance. Let's rise above tonight. Let's give by faith. 
Let's believe God for the biggest offering, the greatest offering, the biggest avalanche of finances and resources pouring in tonight. Uh, we're part of something so incredible, it's beyond description. And I want all of us, as they did in the book of Acts, to enter into a supernatural dimension where God responds to this offering with an outpouring of his power. I'm going to do my best to see that that happens, and I want to challenge you to do the same. Our heads are bowed. Oh, God, touch every pastor, every pastor's wife, every disciple, and every delegate. Lord, I pray your voice would be heard loud and clear. I pray for sacrifice tonight, for viewing our wealth and resources, that which we have command of as not our own, but that which is useful to meet the needs of this conference and to lay at Pastor Mitchell's feet for distribution to meet every need, Lord. I loose finances. I loose a supernatural, miraculous offering tonight that will abundantly meet every need and go way beyond that, Lord. And then we will watch for and look for the demonstration demonstration of power that's going to be loosed uh, as you respond to what is done tonight in this offering. Uh, and we thank you in Jesus' name and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Let's worship the Lord as we give tonight. What an incredible conference we've had. And here it is already the final night. I just want to add my thanks to every single one of you that have been here laboring in prayer. Thank you for every one of you that have given and uh, helped make this possible that we get to do the will of God. Everyone online as well that has participated. I really am grateful for that. It's, it's I often, my friends or people that are on the platform with me, I often just turn to them and say, can you believe that God lets us be a part of this? That is still incredible to me. Thank God. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to the book of Genesis chapter 12. In 1804, President Thomas Jefferson commissioned a man named Meriwether Lewis to explore the land that had been purchased. It was called the Louisiana Purchase. This was the land extending to the west coast um, and uh, this had been purchased but even though we bought it we didn't know much about what was there so Meriwether Lewis and uh, uh, his partner became the Lewis and Clark expedition they set out they spent over two years exploring and mapping 
the land, and they did this, they entered into what had been intended by the purchase. And by doing so, they opened the way for others to follow. The text that we are going to read, Abraham enters the land that God intended. And what we're going to see, this conference is foundations. I preached on the foundations Monday night. Much of that had to do with the practical dimension of foundations. In this, we are going to see some heart foundations. And something that was in Abraham or Abram, as he was called then, that enabled him to enter into all that God had for him. But it's the same three heart issues that have to be in every single one of us. If you want to enter the land, you're going to have to have these things at work in you as well. I want to preach about entering the land, Genesis 12, 4 through 9. So Abram departed as the Lord had spoken to him, and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he departed from Haran. Then Abram took Sarai, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son, all their possessions that they had gathered, the people they had acquired in Haran, and they departed to go to the land of Canaan. So they came to the land of Canaan. Abram passed through the land to the place of Shechem, as far as the terebinth tree of Moreh. And the Canaanites were then in the land. Then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, to your descendants, I will give this land. And there he built an altar to the Lord who had appeared to him. And he moved from there to the mountain east of Bethel. And he pitched his tent with Bethel on the west and Ai on the east. And there he built an altar to the Lord and called on the name of the Lord. So Abram journeyed going on still toward the south, entering the land. The first hard issue that will enable us to enter the land is simply obeying God. Our text is speaking about God's plans for the world. God has plans. He plans things to happen in the world. He makes plans for our churches. He makes plans for our individual lives. Our text tells that God speaks this is what God does. God speaks and he reveals our part in his plans or his will. Genesis 12, 1, now the Lord had said to Abram, get out of your country from your family and from your father's house to a land I will show you. Now God is speaking and he speaks in different ways to different people and at different times. For one, it might be a sermon. There are people this week, a sermon, many sermons have spoken to you personally, the issues of your heart, your life, your future. For others, it might be a supernatural word from God by the gifts of the Spirit. Another, God will speak through Bible reading, prayer, sometimes perhaps even a voice. God can speak through correction. But God speaks. The problem is that some people refuse to do what God told them to do. Jonah 1.3, God had told Jonah, I want you to go to Nineveh. But Jonah 1.3, but Jonah arose to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. This is the problem. God will speak things that maybe we don't want to do. And it's understandable. I want you to go to the desert of Iraq, and he said, the coast of Spain sounds much better. <laughs> I refuse. And he gets in a boat going in the opposite direction. Other people, they're like Abram in our story. Abram didn't outright refuse. He delayed. And many people, that's what they do. Genesis 12, 1 says, now the Lord had said, to Abram, and he's referring to chapter 11. The Bible says that God had spoken and revealed his will in some ways. They started on the journey, but in Genesis 11:31, they came to Haran and they dwelt there. He spent years in Haran. They were supposed to be in Canaan. He wasn't refusing, saying, I will never go. He's saying, I will go. 
soon. But it has the same effect. You're not in the land of Canaan. You're not in the place in the will of God doing what God wants you to do. This is what many people do. They say, I will, but not yet. Yes, Lord, as soon as I get situated. Absolutely, God, once I get my financial security arranged. So whether you refuse outright or delay, disobedience is what stops the will of God. For some, it stops God's will temporarily, like Jonah, until they repent. But others, it stops God's will permanently. The rich young ruler went away sorrowful. He was never heard from again. There was no later time when he sorted out to, uh, the issues of his heart. This is so simple. If you were hoping for me to explain Nephilim tonight, this is not going to happen tonight. <laughs> the foundations of our fellowship are this simple. It is obedience. Because it is the will of God is released by obedience. Verse 4, so Abram departed as the Lord had spoken to him. It is not until we begin to do what God told us to do that the plans of God begin to be activated. It's all theory. God may speak, but it is not real in your life until the moment that we obey. And our text says, so Abram departed as the Lord had said. See what obedience does? Obedience releases further revelation. Verse 7, then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, to your descendants, I will give this land. What's that then there for? It is after verse 4, so Abram departed as the Lord said. This is how God works. He will tell you something of his will. He will begin to work his will in part, but not until we obey does it release more and further revelation. Moses saw a burning bush. God was attracting his attention by a miraculous sign. He said, he responds, I will turn aside and see this great sight. And it was then that the Lord began to speak. God did not just call out from the bush, Moses, it's Egypt, that's your destiny. Because this is what God does. Obedience, doing what the Lord has said is what causes us to receive more. Mark 4, 25, or whoever has, to him more will be given. Has means using what you already have. God says, if you use what I already have given you, if you do what I've already told you, then you will be given more. A pastor took over a church. He was new there. He preached the first sermon. Everyone was pleased. This guy, that was a very good sermon. The next Sunday, he preached the exact same sermon. And they're all looking at each other. They were very puzzled, but they thought, you know, maybe the move or whatever. Third Sunday, he preached the exact same sermon. And finally, someone said, um, are you aware that you preached the same sermon three times in a row? And he said, yes. And when you begin to do what I preached the first Sunday, I'll preach something new. <laughs> There are some people, they would have one sermon for life. <laughs> you will never know more about God and his will than you will obey. You will never, I'm going to study, you're not going to know more about the will of God than you are willing to obey. And our text says that it has to be ongoing or continued obedience. Verse 6, Abram passed through the land to a place of Shechem, as far as the terebinth tree of Moreh. 
he starts to enter into the promised land and God is careful to say he passed through. God is trying to say something. If you have started doing right, don't stop. Because it is common that people begin, they are stirred in a conference, but then they get sidetracked. They get tired. You don't quit over time. 2 Thessalonians 3.13, do not grow weary in doing good. It was Eugene Peterson wrote a book and the title was A Long Obedience in the Same Direction. You know, they did a study. They wanted to find out why is it when people start learning a musical instrument, why does one person just become tremendous at it? Fine musicians and others, they falter or don't become very good. And so they studied children who were starting to learn an instrument and they asked a very simple question. When they're first learning it, they asked, how long do you think you're gonna play this instrument? And there was a small percentage of children who said, I'm gonna play my whole life. Those were the ones who invariably became the best musicians because you have to continue. Listen, I started tithing at age 14. I am never gonna stop. I started praying and evangelizing and giving when I was a teenager, and I'm never gonna stop. Started planting churches in my late 20s. I'm never gonna stop. We had conference six months ago. You're not gonna believe what we did six months ago. We got together, we prayed. We obeyed God financially. We answered altar calls and we planted churches. And that's what we did this week. Guess what we're gonna do in six months? We're gonna do it till we die. That's right. Second heart issue is seen in our st story and that is if you wanna enter the land, it has to do with pitching tents. Life has a material dimension. We all need places to live, food to eat, clothes to wear, money to pay bills. We live for God. In fact, we minister for God while dealing with the material dimension. Elijah needed food. Elisha needed a place to sleep and to work in his ministry. Peter needed money to pay taxes. But our text says the decisions we make about money and the material dimension is literally going to determine our future. Our text is very specific. He pitched his tent with Bethel on the west and Ai on the east. Bethel was the place where Jacob made a covenant with God to tithe. I am going to obey you financially. But on the other side is Ai. Ai is where Achan coveted and took, stole the silver and the clothing and cursed his life. Financial obedience on one side brings blessing. Financial disobedience curses your life. See, the will of God always has a financial dimension to it. I want God's will, okay? but you're gonna to have to make right decisions about money. The danger is when the decisions of life are based on money and not God and his will. Genesis 13, 11, then Lot chose him all the plain of Jordan. The Bible says it was well watered. In other words, I could make a lot of money there. There's a city I could sell stuff there. So he chose no record of praying, no record of seeking godly wisdom. I want the money. There are people, oh, I want to get to heaven. Oh, I would love to do God's will. Uh, no, I can't come to church. Why not? I'm making money. I can't be involved in outreach. I got to work. I can't be a disciple. I can't respond to the call of God because of money. I have to have a certain lifestyle. There are people here, you want the will of God, 
but you won't stop spending. You're so far in debt. If God himself appeared right now, you would say, I just can't. There's no way I could afford to go do the will of God. There are people here this week, you heard five challenges of giving. You could participate in God's will and you wanted to, but you can't. King Jesus spoke to you, but the problem is King Visa says no. <laughs> King Amex says no. The decisions of giving sometimes in some people are determined by money and their desires, not by God. I can't, don't get behind me, Satan. What, what was that number that came in my head during the, get behind me, Satan, there's no way. I can't afford it. If I gave that, that would mean I can't buy what I want. I had plans for that money. See, we have to make right decisions about money if you, and the material dimension if you're gonna enter into God's will. Very important phrase, is, it's a contrast phrase, the Bible says Abram pitched his tent and built his altars. He pitched his tent. The place that he lived, he viewed that this is temporary. My relationship with God is permanent. Because money is temporary, I pitch my tent. It's movable. Because my relationship with God is permanent, I build my altar. Now, this doesn't mean that Abram didn't have money. He had a lot of it. The Bible says he was rich. But what it meant by pitching his tent, it meant that money did not determine his decisions in life. The focus of his life was not money. It was God and his will. Hebrews 11, 9 and 10. By faith he dwelt in the land of promise as in a foreign country, dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs of, with him of the same promise, for he waited for the city which has foundations, whose builder and maker is, is God. Why did he live in it? Why didn't he just build a nice house? Because the decisions of his life, the Bible says, were made with the values of another place in mind a heavenly perspective. One of the foundations of our entire fellowship is financial obedience. And I don't care what other churches are doing, in our fellowship, we tithe. 10%. We don't tip, we tithe. Some of you are bad tippers. God doesn't want your tips. We challenge forgiving. So, some of the pastors here, they have pressed you financially. That's what we believe in. We're, we're doing a great work. It's very expensive. We encourage people. Live for God and his will, not money. This is my parents. Pastor Wayman Mitchell. My mother, Nelda. That was their life. My parents in early ministry, my dad made up his mind, I'm called to preach. I work as little as possible. Why? So I can give myself to the word of God. Many of you, you were glad that he was behind this pulpit declaring the word of God. But that was settled years ago when he said, God over money. That is foundational to who we are. Their lifestyle. I used to try to get dad to spend money on himself. Like, Greg, I got a suit. It only costs $60. Like, I know, dad, it looks like it. Come on, man. <laughs> His giving. Generosity. Giving to God. Giving to people. But you see, every person... You have to make your own decisions. Listen, there is a land. There's a promised land waiting for you. I can't make your decision. My dad made his own decisions. My wife and I, we make our... I cannot make your financial decisions. But you have to if you're going to enter the land. 
have a young man in our church, every conference he would get stirred. Oh, pastor, I'm stirred. He would last three days. I think one time it lasted actually four weeks. That was the record. And then he would be submerged again. Next conference, oh, pastor, I'm stirred. He did that for nine years. Another conference came around. Oh, pastor, I'm stirred. This time after conference, he said, pastor, I don't know if you've noticed, but I tend to get excited at conference and then it, it just kind of lasts a few days to a few weeks and it's like, no. <laughs> and then he was honest. He said, pastor, the problem is I'm more excited about making money than I am about my calling. And he said, how do I change that? And I said, ask. Ask God to do a miracle and give you a love, a passion for his will. And he did. He did that privately. He said the next day after praying that prayer, he got a call. His, his jam in life was investment properties. That's what he was really excited about. The next day after praying, God, I want to do your will, he got a call. You know that property you've been wanting to buy? And it will have great returns, but the problem is it would consume he and his wife for a long time to come. And he said, this is the next day after I prayed for the... He said, that's from hell. That's not God. That's from hell. And he said, no. And now it's been two years that he's been excited. Now... If you want to know how this story ends, watch this stage in a few minutes. Now, the final heart issue we see in our scripture is simply building altars. A mark of Ab Abraham's life was building altars. He built four of them in his life. Altars are a response to revelation. Verse 7, then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, to your descendants I'll give this land. And there he built an altar to the Lord who had appeared to him. You know what the altar is for? The altar is where you personalize what God spoke to you. You've heard preaching this week. The point of preaching is not that you vote like an ice skating competition, you know, 6.2 negative three, you know. <laughs> the point of preaching is not, so you say, so true. The point is be, when you get before God and you say, that is for me. God, I heard what you said and I agree. That's what an altar call is when you come and say, God, I heard what you said to me in this message. Altars are a place of worship. He built an altar to the Lord, verse 7. You worship something higher. God speaks things because he's higher than us. He has the right to ask or tell us anything. And when you build an altar, you are saying, you are higher, I agree with your plans in life. Altars are a place of sacrifice. Often an animal will be sacrificed when you responded there or, or as in Jacob, but he poured out valuable oil. Sometimes what God is telling us will cost us. That's the point. It will hurt. It will be a sacrifice. I didn't really want to do that. That's what altars are. See, altars can be in different places. They can come in different ways. For some people, it's literally. Some of you, there was a spot in the carpet in the aisle or at the front that was an altar for you this week where you responded to revelation. For some people, it's a building, a location, a moment in time. But our text says two times he built an altar to the Lord. Altars were built of stone. Primarily, it was something lasting and permanent. Again, please note, he pitched his tent. That's movable, that's temporary. But he built the altar. I want to ask you a very simple question. 
Where are your altars? Where has God spoken to you about your promised land, which is his will in your life? I want to show you a few of the altars in my life. First photo here. This is 41 Walcott Street in a suburb called Mount Lawley in Perth, West Australia. I was 16 years old. I was going to Australia just for a look. It was in that building. I'm minding my own business. Dad is doing a discipleship class on how to study and how to preach, which has nothing to do. 41 Walcott Street, God spoke to me in that building, and he said, that's what I want you to do. That was not on my agenda at all. It was in that building I bowed my knee and I said, yes. And I immediately began to give myself to the word of God. Next picture. This is 146 Beaufort Street in Perth. It's just down the road from that building. It, this used to be the Church of Christ. We rented this for conference. It was in that building that Lisa and I we're watching a conference video. It was all about the Philippines, the footage. And in a movie about the Philippines, God spoke to both Lisa and I and said, I want you to go to Africa. It was the first time I'd ever heard the call of God. Lisa heard it too, that God wanted us to be missionaries. And it was in that building, we turned at our seats and made it an altar and we said, yes, we will go to Africa. Didn't know how, didn't know when, but that's exactly what happened. That's an altar. Third altar in my life is 62 Scarborough Beach Road, the suburb of Scarborough in the city of Perth. It was in that building that I entered the ministry. It was in that building that I preached my first altar call. It was in that building that I answered altar calls and dealt with issues of my character and tried to get God to change me. It was in that building that I made decisions to forgive and not let bitterness consume my life. And it was in that building that Lisa and I said, we will work with people and we want to give our lives for the ministry of God. One final altar I want to show you. It was in an airplane. I told this story, I won't tell all of it, in the last Memorial Stones, number 30. God had supernaturally spoken and it spooked me. He told me he wanted Lisa and I to go to the nation of Turkey and I did not want to go. I, I booked a ticket in obedience. Yeah, okay, I'll go for a look, but I am not into... It was in an airplane. I am wrestling. People, they looked at me. I don't know. They probably thought I was a crazy dude talking to myself. I'm like, I do not want to go to Turkey. God, I'm going to Turkey, but I don't want to go to. But I had made a deal years before. God, whatever you want me to do, obedience is what releases the will of God. And it was on a British Airways flight between Johannesburg and Istanbul. I bowed my heart and I said, God, I don't want to go to Turkey, but if you want me to go, we will go. It was a test. God didn't want me to go to Turkey. He wanted me to come to Prescott. But he wanted to know. It's great when you talk about the story. Did I ever tell you about the time that I said yes to God? Yeah, but you're 105 and that was like a long time ago. <laughs> you know what the problem is? Is people move away from their altars. They become different people. They now have different responses than when they built altars to the Lord. What happens over time is people, they start pitching their altars and building their tents. The will of God now is movable, it's changeable. Some people need to return to their altars. Genesis 31, 13, I'm the God of Bethel where you anointed the pillar and you made a vow to me. Now arise, get out of this land and return to the land of your family. You know what has to happen? Every person, I can't do this for you. You gotta do it for yourself. You have to honestly examine your own heart and say, am I still the same? Am I still doing what God told me at the altar? 
Those buildings that I showed you in Perth, West Australia, I'm going there in March. Every time I go, I go to those buildings. And it's not just nostalgia. I, I got fond memories of those places. That's not why I'm there. Part of what I'm doing is God, is the answer still yes? When I told you yes in Walcott Street, when we told you yes in Beaufort Street, we said yes in Scarborough Beach Road, is the answer still yes? I have to check my own heart because that's the only way you can ever enter in to the promised land and that's how you survive over time. Final thought is that altars are a place of proclamation. Verse 9, he called on the name of the Lord. The word call there partly means as though he's talking to God. But the word originally means to proclaim. To proclaim. Altars are personal, but they are not private. Other people, they will see and hear of your altars. Your family will know it. Abram's servants would hear about it and see it. The Canaanites were in the land. What is going on here? He is proclaiming, I belong to God. And I want to say something to you. Your ability to proclaim effectively is dependent on your altars. You know the, the common statement that many pastors make? I can't get these people to pray, give, surrender to the call of God. My brother, maybe your altars are missing. Maybe you're trying to get them to surrender to something you have moved away from. Because the only way it works, see, it's not in for preaching, it's not information. When you preach who you are, it's a life. And if you have moved away from your altars, you have no hope of ever getting people to come to theirs. I close with the story of Alexander Duff. He was a veteran missionary to India. When he was an old man in Scotland, he preached and challenged young people to volunteer their lives for the nation of India, but no one responded. In the middle of his appeal, he fainted and they carried him off the platform. A doctor urged him, lie still because your heart is very weak. And he said, but I must finish my appeal. He stood again and he said, when Queen Victoria calls... For volunteers for India, hundreds of young men respond. But when King Jesus calls, no one goes. He asked, is it true that Scotland has no more sons to give for India? And there was silence. And he said, very well, if Scotland has no more young men to send to India, then old and decrepit though I am, I will go back. And though I cannot preach, I will lie down on the shores of the Ganges River and die in order to let the people of India know there is at least one man in Scotland who cares enough for their souls to give his life for him, for them. And as he turned to leave the pulpit, suddenly all over the congregation, young men began to jump to their feet saying, I'll go, I'll go, I'll go. You know why? Because Alexander Duff had never left his altar. It was still real in him. And when you're all, listen, 41 Walcott Street is as real to me today as when I was 16 years old. I have never forgotten it, and I deliberately never forget it. 146 Beaufort Street, it's, it's, it's in here. It's alive in me. And as long as I always in my heart return and build the altar again, then my prayer is by the Spirit of God, He will cause other people also to respond. My question as I close is what impact will the altars of your life have on other people? Let's bow our heads, close our eyes all across this place. Thank God, with heads bowed, now I 
bring you to a challenge and the first and greatest challenge of all is that there are people here you are not right with God. You need Jesus Christ to save you. You need God to do a miracle on the inside. The will of God in your life can never begin until you say yes to God and you say no to sin. What you need to do is pray and turn from your sin. Surrender your heart to Jesus Christ. How many people are here in this building? We're going to make great announcements in a moment. If you're not right with God and you want to pray tonight and turn from your sin, you want to say yes to Jesus Christ. What you need to do is pray and surrender your life to God. If you want to do that right now while our heads are bowed, I want you to lift your hand so I can see it. Pastor Greg, I need Jesus. I want to get right with God all across this place. How many would there be? At the back, God bless you. How many others? Lift up your hand. Lift up your hand. I need Jesus. Lift your hand right now. God is dealing with people. How many backsliders? Backslider, lift up your hand. I want to come back to God. You got away. You surrendered before, but you went back to sin. Backslider, lift up your hand. God loves you. He wants to do a miracle in you. Others, you need Jesus. Quickly, right now, lift your hand. This is your moment. You need to respond to God right now. Anybody else? Quickly, we're going to move on in just a moment. That's what you need. You need Jesus to save you. I want every one of you that lifted your hands, stand up to your feet where you're at and stay there standing right now. Stand up. How many are here? Stand up. You need Jesus. I want to get right with God. Stand up. Thank you. Thank you, numbers of you. Now, I want every one of you where you stand, I'm going to lead you in a prayer. You're going to surrender to Jesus Christ right now. Where you, I want you to say this out loud. Say, dear Jesus, I believe you died on the cross. You died for my sin. And I admit I am a sinner. And I ask you to forgive me. Come into my heart and give me the power to live for you. And I choose to turn away from my sin from this moment on in Jesus' name. Amen. God, now touch them. Oh, God, every one of these people, I'm asking, make yourself real to them. In Jesus' name, Lord God, your power and your presence, let it be made real to every one of them. Seal the decision that they just pray. Let's give God a clap offering right now. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God, thank you, Jesus, for your goodness. Praise God. Praise God. You can all be seated. Thank God. We have some exciting announcements that I want to give to you. Thank God. I want to begin in our uh, business meeting. We had a number of evangelists that uh, we announced that are going to be operating in our fellowship I want to, uh, these couples to stand to their feet where they are. First of all, uh, Dave and Cindy Fowles will be evangelizing out of Bullhead City, Arizona. Thank God. And Andy and Heather Anderson are going to be evangelizing out of San Antonio, Texas. And uh, Vitaly uh, uh, Glopina. And his wife are going to be evangelizing out of Tempe, Arizona. Thank God. Jerry and Jenny Sarabia will be evangelizing out of El Paso, Texas. And Ashker and Linda Gafour will be evangelizing out of Chandler, Arizona. And Jan Willem and Miranda Van Dam will be evangelizing out of Arnhem in Holland. Thank God. Thank God. Then last night we uh, announced some international churches. I want to begin with those. Two of these couples are here and they're going to come. Uh, first of all, we announced going into El Puerto, Santa Maria, Spain, that's in uh, Madrid. This is uh, out of Prescott, Arizona, Oceanside, California. Matt and Claudia Stowe. Thank God. And 
going into the nation of Singapore, out of Prescott, Arizona, and Yigo Guam, Dion, and Audrey Jones. And then we have uh, couples that are not able to be with us. We'll have their uh, photos on the screen. Going into uh, Barquisimeto, Venezuela, out of Arequipa, uh, Peru, Miguel and Ana Castrillo. And their photo will be up here. Thank God. Yes. And their photo, I apologize because I don't look back. If I look back, you'll see my bald head. And so... Um, <laughs> I didn't have their photo last night. I do apologize. That was, uh, that was on me. I didn't realize when I forwarded it, it didn't have, never mind. It was my fault. Okay. <laughs> Announcing that into Sabatsi, Namahana, Analamanga, uh, Madagascar, Lova and Narina, Randambito to, to Anina, and this is out of Ansira Bay and Ambala Tolampi, and Tenerivo, Madagascar. <laughs> Man. And then into uh, Ampana to Avona, uh, Vacana Karata, Madagascar, Etienne and Harasoa, Rahiri Nirina. And that is out of Ansira Bay. Thank God. And then going into Bucaramanga, Colombia, out of El Paso, Texas, in partnership with Prescott, Gabriel and Melissa Ruiz. Thank God. Thank God. Then we are very excited to announce some works in the United States. Going into Boston, Massachusetts, out of Prescott, Arizona, Anthony and Natalie Cassio. Amen. Thank God. Thank God. And Anthony was the one who decided he wanted the will of God more than money. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Thank God. Going into Rio Grande City, Texas, out of Uvalde, Texas, Victor and Julissa Reyes. Going into Bradenton, Florida, out of Albuquerque, New Mexico, the Blue Water Congregation, Alejandro and Kiana Alcantara. <laughs> Going into Sparks, Nevada, out of Reno, Nevada, Nolan and Destiny Tom. Going into Cold Springs, Nevada, out of North Reno, Nevada, Randy and Debbie Drennan. And we're excited. This is a milestone. This is the first church plant out of North Reno. And we celebrate with them. Thank God. May that be the first of many in the years to come. Thank God. Going into Missoula, Montana, out of Redlands, California, Richie and Katrina Ruiz. <laughs> Going into Omaha, Nebraska, out of West Las Vegas, Nevada, Nico and Nico Watts. God. Very good. God bless you, Pastor Lamb. You're a church planter. Thank God. Then we do have uh, two redirections that I, I uh, want to uh, announce to you. Both of these are health-related. 
Uh, going back into Redlands, California, out of Texarkana, Texas, is George and Lisa Alboran. They'll be going back in. And thank God. God bless you. And I ask that you'd pray for our brother who's been diagnosed with cancer. So I'm asking that you would pray for him. And then uh, I want my brother Gary Marsh to stand. Where is Gary? Someone here? Some wave. He's over there. Gary Marsh. Gary Marsh is, uh, has some uh, health issues. That means he uh, is going to step down from the First Phoenix Church. He's going to come into Prescott. But I want to salute you, my brother Gary. You have done a fantastic job. Thank God for you. Thank God. Amen. My brother has put his hand to the plow. He has gotten people saved, made disciples, planted churches, released workers for the harvest field. And my brother, I salute you and thank God for you. Thank God. Taking the first Phoenix church from Pastor Marsh is his disciple, Tom and Leanna Philippi. They're coming. Thank God. Thank God. And the Philippines have been excellent missionaries for years. They went to Shimen in China, but they readily agreed to help their home church. They're taking over their mother church. Uh, going into San Marcos, California, out of Oceanside, California, is Eric and Monica Zeladon. Thank God. And they're taking over for the Stowe's who are going to Spain. And then out of the Gallup, New Mexico, they planted a, a worker going into Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam. That was uh, there, but they've needed a worker to take the church in Cuba. New Mexico, we're very excited to announce going into Cuba, New Mexico, out of Winslow, Arizona, Jared and Latanya Jake. Thank God. And this is a milestone because this is the church in Chinle. This is their first grandbaby church. And so we're excited about that. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. And then I want to announce that the new concert directors in Prescott uh, here, uh, Devin and Jackie Riles. Thank God. Now, I want to, all of the, the uh, men, the leaders that I spoke to, if you'll come up on the platform, we're going to pray. We're going to ordain these people into ministry. Pastor Rich Cox, if you would come and help me and uh, help uh, shepherd these people so they can receive prayer. This is, a, what we're about to do is very, very important. I, I would, if you would please stay and pray and help us, we are asking for a supernatural dimension of God to be poured out on every one of these couples so that when they go into their field of labor that God will go before them, already begin to pr prepare and God is gonna equip them for the ministry. The first couple of they will come, and my brothers, you'll come, they have microphones, there you go. There you are, that's it. Go ahead and Daryl, you pray for the first. That we're asking right now, your supernatural help, Father from heaven, a grace of God upon this couple. Anoint them for this new work right now. Impart a spirit of grace. Give him wisdom, the wisdom of his fathers. God, a dimension of God, direction on where to go and what to do. Lord, I speak open doors right now. Hallelujah, Father God. As we pray, there would be an impartation. Oh, for yea, the Lord would say to you tonight that even maybe in the past you've wondered, do I have the answers? Do I know which way to turn?
But I would say to you tonight, even as you venture from me, says the Lord thy God, a spirit of wisdom and revelation shall come upon you. You shall know what steps to take. You shall know where to go, says the Lord thy God. I will guide you by my hand, says the Lord, by godly counsel and the word of God, by a still small voice in your spirit, says the Lord. Have confidence, my son and daughter. I will go with you, says the Lord. Hallelujah. Father, bring that to pass. Bless our sister in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Amen. Father God, we thank you tonight, Lord, for the grace of God. Uh, we thank you for the open door, Father, their response. Uh, oh, God, we pray for the nation of Singapore. We ask you for Holy Ghost revival. Uh, God, I pray for dominion and authority. I pray for signs and wonders and miracles, God, demonstrations of your power. Amen. You know, uh, you know, we just talked just before church, you just met, and I told you that it was around 30 years ago that my wife and I went to a minister in Singapore. And so since then, we've always prayed for it. And I just want to tell you, you know, as well as I do, it's a very materialistic place. And uh, I'm going to tell you the demonstration of the power of God is the only thing that's going to get their attention. We're going into a crazy world. There's going to be tremendous economic upheaval. People are going to be desperate. A young man with a simple, powerful gospel message is going to be a light in a dark place. I'm encouraging you to be a man of God. Everything that you've done pioneering everything you've done as a disciple of the hand of God is on you. Be that man. You don't have to change for them. You be the man of God that they desperately need in that place. Father God, your glory, your power, your authority, and your dominion uh, shall be upon his life. Oh, in Jesus' name, hallelujah. So you're the one. Father, touch this couple, Lord, I pray the hand of God upon their hearts, Lord God, only with strength and grace and favor. Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit, Father, advancing your purpose and will in my brother's heart. Give him a heart for people, a love for souls as never before. For yea, the Lord your God would say, the patience with which I have worked with you is a gift for you to work with others. For yea, I will bring you people that will need much patience as I have demonstrated patience with you, saith God. And yea, I will give you key people early on in your calling and ministry, but they will not seem as such, saith God, for they will have many problems, and they will cause much grief, perhaps, to themselves and others around. But only have patience, saith the Lord your God, for out of these rough uh, pieces of coal, I will craft diamonds that will be foundational members of your church. Only look for this early on in your ministry, even in the early days, even in the earliest weeks, O Lord, saith God of your ministry, I will bring people to you that will need much patience, but they are the ones that I've called to be the founding members of your church, and I will bless you, saith the Lord your God, in all that you do. Oh, riala ravila raba sho rolo robo sanda raba rotondo rolo robo salaramanda. Praise God, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this precious couple. God, we cover them in the blood of Jesus. God, I take authority over every stronghold of wickedness. I break every curse against them. God, I loose gifting and sanction and dominion and anointing. God, satarabokondo rosarabakai. My son, I say to you in boldness, go forward. Even declare my kingship and my authority. Even demonstrate in the eyes of those that I send to you the supernatural. 
I will even bring you those in great need. And I, I command you to believe for the supernatural, to pray, to take dominion, to break curses, to speak of them of the spiritual world. But believe me for supernatural healing because I have even ordained and reserved people in this place for you. And I will bring them to you so that you might speak of my kingship and pray for supernatural healing and deliverance, says God. Halalabak. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God, for this couple tonight. God, we're asking you, God, to lay your hand upon them. God, we're believing tonight for the spirit of discernment, oh God. Uh, God, give him wisdom even beyond uh, himself, I pray. God, open doors. Uh, no man can close. Uh, God, navigate, God, the complexities of ministry. Uh, God, let it be a shepherd's heart. Uh, even in this people, God, tonight, uh, I pray, God, you would give them, uh, oh, God, fruit, uh, even that shall remain. Do a quick uh, and a mighty work of God. Show yourself uh, through their faithfulness, God. Honor it tonight uh, in Jesus' name. Brother, I want to tell you, I am... Um, I'm a sports fan. I probably get it from my pastor, but the reality of it is there's a there's a term in the sports world that I've been just grabbing on lately and it's they say the next man up. And it's interesting because it speaks to somebody who has prepared themselves as though they were in their own moment. And you never know what's going to happen. You never know when somebody's going to fall. You never know when somebody's going to get injured or hurt. But uh, it is a heart issue that has said, you know what, doesn't matter if I have the limelight, doesn't matter if uh, I'm the main person, I'm going to prepare for such a time that God would call my name. And you have done that. And, uh, I, I, you know, it's, it's almost like in the Bible, the Bible says that, you know, Judas, he betrayed the Lord, but Matthias, they cast lots and it fell upon him. And I'm saying that to say the favor of God has fallen upon you. And God's favor is on you and he is with you because you have positioned your heart like that. But God says, wants to say to you that the as you go out and you venture for God, there's going to be people that you have your eye on. But God's going to remind you that the main person that you're looking at might not be who God is looking at. And God might be looking for the next man up. And so if as you move in that, God's going to give you men, brother. I see it right now. God's going to give you men who have the spirit. Pastor, whatever you need me to do, I will do it. God, I pray right now by the Holy Ghost. God, I thank you, God, for this couple tonight. God, I'm believing for a speedy work. We're asking you, God, to show yourself mighty. God, pour out your spirit in revival, God. Let it come to pass. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you right now for this precious couple. Oh, Father, thank you right now, God, by the Holy Ghost. Lord, anointing of the Holy Ghost, grace, gifts, and anointing and power. Oh, hallelujah. Man, you prayed. You said, God, I need the heart of my pastor, but I don't know if I've got it. I prayed and I prayed. I'm so anxious. It's the heart of Christ. In the heart of your pastor is the heart of Christ. And as you've sought that, God's going to enlarge the very, the very thing you don't think you can have. God's going to give it to you. I don't know whether that's a love for people or there's something about your pastor. You look at it, I don't know if I could ever. God's going to give it to you as you continue to seek it. Father, thank you. Right now, Lord, bless him. Father, you've heard his prayers. Bless them, God, and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory to God. Father God, we thank you so much for this precious couple. Oh, Lord, that you have raised them up for this very day. 
You have called them according to your purpose. And we believe you right now to impart to them, God, uh, that spiritual gift, that mantle, that anointing, God, uh, oh, that will produce great fruitfulness in their lives. Uh, I do believe you for blessing upon them in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. You might be thinking I'm getting a late start at this. Amen. This is going to be a whole new thing for you. This is going to be, a, you're going to find wings and you're going to fly. You're, this is going to f do something in your heart. I'm not just talking about your ministry because what goes on in your heart is what's going to come out in your ministry. And that, that lifting that God is going to give you, that's going to lift others. You're going to see people touched powerfully because you yourself are being touched powerfully. You're not late, you're right on time. Amen. God, seal it. God, accomplish your will and your purpose in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Father, we come before you this evening, God. We're so grateful. Of Lord, for those who would surrender to your will uh, and to your purposes, Lord, we set them apart uh, in this moment, Lord, uh, for your calling and for your purposes. Uh, we're asking you for fruitfulness uh, and dominion as they set foot in this city. Uh, God, that you would have your way, you would go before them, Lord, uh, and you would perform great signs and wonders uh, and miracles, Lord God, that you would do a great work uh, and a speedy work, uh, Lord, through their hands. Uh, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Brother, when you were walking up, I, the camera came on you, and I thought to myself, wow, he's young. And the Lord spoke to me and said, so were you. I was 20 years old when I was first launched out, and uh, I'll tell you, there was a, a, a trepidation. There was a, a, a real, can I do this? Am I able to do this? And what I saw was God come through every time, that it wasn't me that was doing it. It was God's work and an enabling hand. I had moments when people would come into the church and say, can I speak to your dad? And I didn't know why they were asking me that. I'm the pastor. Uh, but that's, you know, and there will be people who will not think on the outside that, they, that this is very serious, but what God's doing in your heart and what God's going to do through you is a very serious work of God. And do not be afraid of their faces. You look to God and say, God, I will not fear them. Lord, you have positioned me. You have placed me. You have called me, and I will do your work. Uh, amen. God, move upon them, God. I come against the spirit of fear, God. Infuse him uh, with faith right now in Jesus' name. Uh, amen. God, we're asking right now for you to touch this couple. God, we ordain them to the ministry and what you have called them to do and called them to be. God, I declare right now a dimension of God that's going to come upon them. That's going to cause yokes to be destroyed. You're going to give them wisdom beyond their ability right now. God, I thank you. You're going to touch them right now. I was saying to you tonight, my son, know that I'm with you. I've ordained you and called you for such a time as this. Even in past times, as you have called out to me and prayed and asked of me for places and locations, know that I'm bringing this to pass in my timing, that I'm opening doors that no man can shut. And you have called out to me and said, God, I need to know the place. I need to know the time and know that you're stepping into destiny. This is not a work of man. This is not the work of your own ingenuity. But know that this is my divine timing, that I'm going to open doors in this place. I'm going to move upon a people in this place. I'm going to bring them to the light and know that I've called you. Do not allow the enemy to lie to you and to doubt your calling, but know that I've called you with a great calling, thus saith God, and you shall enter destiny and I shall move before you. And remember, it's my calling upon thy life, thus saith God. Oh, God, we thank you right now. Let's stretch our hands towards this couple. Father, 
We lay our hands upon this couple, God, that have stepped forward, God, to answer the call of God for this church in Phoenix. God, as they step in to fill their pastor's shoes, I'm asking you for an unusual acceleration. Supernaturally help them, equip them, give them supernatural wisdom, grace, and favor God. Um, unlock mysteries of the kingdom and reveal them, God, to this man's heart. Um, help this woman, God, to be her husband's help me to um, give her supernatural sensitivity in her prayer life, unusual um, ability to petition and gain response from heaven. Father, we thank you for this couple, God, all that you've done in the past. God, you have been preparing them for such a time as this. You have brought them to the kingdom for such a time as this. And yea, my brother, uh, the Lord would say unto you, um, there is absolutely no surprises in God. And God has his hand upon you, and he is giving you a supernatural, first of all, a supernatural hedge. The demonic realm that would try to lie or mess or muck around with your mind, God says, I'm putting a hedge of divine protection. God wants me to tell you that you should see yourself even as a postman, a postman that simply delivers the letters, the telegrams, and uh, the uh, missives uh, that come from afar. You're going to go to the king of kings. You're going to get um, uh, his word at, uh, at his throne and from his mouth. And then you are to speak boldly, thus saith the Lord. Not your word, but his word. And have a confidence that the words that you speak in his name shall not fall to the ground. And as you do that, as you exercise, as you lock your faith onto the promises of God that are yes and amen, God says, I will accelerate. God says, I will have an unusual uh, uh, favor and a penetrating power because I am gone before you to touch this congregation, even to knit their hearts, and even to cause this congregation to have an unusual sensitivity to go in the flow with you and to get their hearts um, uh, behind you and uphold your hands. God says, um, read Psalms 103 um, and petition me. You have permission to petition me. Take note of the benefits and forget them not. Press in. Press in aggressively. Do not be lax. Do not just go into a flow model and say, oh, I'm being overwhelmed. No, this is a time to hit the ground running. This is a time to say, God, I want new and fresh um, uh, fruit, uh, key individuals, key souls. Um, and God says, I'll even give enlargement in that church uh, you've never expected or experienced in times past. Um, brother, it's the anointing of God upon your life that shall accomplish this and for your wife. Let's pray again. Father, we bless them. We loose your promise to be quickened and, God, to come to pass. Accelerate as the almond tree, God, for both of them, God. Hasten thy word to perform in Jesus' name. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Lord, I ask you for fruitfulness, for wisdom and insight. Lord, I ask you for favor and grace. Lord, I ask you, Lord, for disciples, for fruitfulness. Lord, I ask you to move in miracles, in gifts, in supernatural insight. Build a church, Lord. Work through this couple. Bring tremendous, tremendous acceleration and growth. Establish your work through this couple in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Paul says in 2 Corinthians 6, um, he speaks about the widening of the heart. And I believe God's going to do that in your life. There's going to be people and uh, they have all sorts of backgrounds, all sorts of problems. Um, they're going to come at the same time. There's going to be moments that you feel like overwhelmed. What is this? Can I handle this? And, uh, and it's God. He's bringing these people and he's equipping you. He is widening your heart. He is uh, making you able to work with these people, to minister to these people. And uh, you will see God work through that. He's going to change you. He's going to widen. He's going to enlarge your heart in order to serve these people and build that church. 
Lord, I ask you for that, and I believe you for that. Let it be so, Lord. Your equipping, Lord, your presence, Lord, in his life. I thank you for what you will do in Jesus' powerful name. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father God, we ask you for supernatural anointing on this couple right now. Lord, bless my brother and my sister right now in the name of Jesus. Oh, Lord, touch them right now. Oh, bring things to pass in their ministry. Oh, Lord, in the name of Jesus, we ask you for supernatural strength and anointing and dimension in the name of Jesus, Lord. Oh, randa shalalama sindo. Hallelujah. Oh, amen. Brother, let me tell you something. Jeremiah brought the Rechabites inside the temple in Jeremiah 35. They were tested inside the temple. The Lord tests you inside your church. And now that was a blessing for generations later on in the life of the Rechabites. And, but it was a test inside the foundations that you have works and that was put it inside the church so don't let the devil twist your mind don't let the devil came and tell you no that thing's no maybe i can i have to change some things don't change anything the lord put some things exactly things inside of you for one purpose and one reason is because the battlefield is totally different and you will notice, you will feel it, but you go back to Jeremiah 35 and say, no, no, Lord, you test me inside the church. You put the right foundation inside of me. I will not change anything because the temptations will be changed something. Don't change anything and move forward and you will see that God will bless you and God will bring people in a supernatural way to you because of that, because they will see a different foundation inside of you and you will respond to them. It's because I'm a recovery. You know, because I have the right foundation. Sister, let me tell you something. Don't get stuck in trauma because the Lord wanted that you move forward. Don't look back. Don't look to the side. Don't get stuck in the problems and stuff like that. Just move forward. Don't look back because the Lord has great plans for you and for your life and for your ministry. Let me pray for you. Father God, right now, Lord, help this couple right now. Bless them right now. Lord, I commend all tormenting spirit to leave this my sister right now bless them in the name of jesus right now lord in the name of jesus by the blood of jesus amen hallelujah amen thank god we are going to pray for the couples that cannot be here they're on the screen pastor lamb is going to pray for the first couple miguel and anna this is their granddaughter church out of west las vegas he's going to pray and ask god to ordain them Okay, Father God, we come before you. We believe you for this precious couple that you have brought to this moment by your design, by your paths, God. You brought them into the church in Arequipa, and you have delivered them back into Venezuela to do a supernatural work. I believe, God, that you will use them uh, to sow a seed that spreads across that nation, uh, a great and a mighty vine that reaches over the wall. I believe you for a supernatural anointing on this couple for great fruitfulness. We believe it in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Help us pray for Lova. Hallelujah. Father God, we lift up Lova and Nirina. God, that you are going to go before them as they go to pioneer. God, you're going to give him wisdom and discernment and direction. God, you're going to guide his steps. You're going to show him and put him in contact with people that are going to help him. God, divine conversions, a supernatural dimension of anointing would be upon his life. In Jesus' mighty name, we thank you. Amen. This word is for Lova. Amen. Is that uh, uh, Paul writes to Timothy and says uh, to study, to show yourself approved and rightly handling the word of truth. This is an area that uh, as you go in, God is going to anoint your preaching. 
That when people, because you have studied, because you have sought God for a word in due season, as you begin to gather believers, as you begin to work with converts, and you deliver messages that God has inspired, people are going to tell you, that was exactly what I needed. It's like you knew my life because you want to rightly handle that truth and deliver it. God is going to give you supernatural favor, supernatural wisdom that's going to have lasting impact on lives, making them converts, disciples, and future pastors. Let it come to pass in Jesus' mighty name. Praise God. Father, we're asking for your blessing right now. God, the hand of God would come upon this couple. A supernatural grace. Lord, as they go forth in labor in your name, in this nation, Father, in this area, may, Father, your favor come. Lord, may they hear the word of God. May they have understanding, Lord. I pray pour out revival in that place. Hallelujah. Amen, brother. I want to just encourage you. No doubt God's doing a special work in your nation. And I want you to go out with faith and confidence that not only has God moved for others, but God is going to move for you. You and your wife, lay a hold of God. Say, God, give us quick converts. Give us people that would come to us. Uh, amen. Have an open heart. Uh, even like Lydia of the, Old Test of the New Testament. Even like others that had an open heart. Pray for that and see what God can do because God has a plan for your nation and he wants to move through your life. Hallelujah. Father, thank you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. hallelujah we're going to pray for gabriel and melissa ruiz hallelujah god we ask you tonight god by the holy ghost uh, God, you would go before this couple. Oh, God, I pray, put your hand of blessing upon them. Oh, God, God, order their steps, I pray. Give them key converts, oh, God, by the Holy Ghost. God, if you be for them, who can be against them? Oh, God, I pray. God, divine connections. God, I pray. Lord, by the Spirit of the living God, I pray, God. Use them, God, for your glory, I pray. God, build your church. The gates of hell shall not prevail. We thank you for them. Hallelujah. Praise God. Then finally, we're going to have the uh, Prescott Church staff come. Uh, Devin and Jackie Riles, our concert directors, are going to come. Madam Priscilla Sanderlim, our youth pastors, Chris and Paula Hart our uh, pastoral uh, visitation, uh, Diego and Kelly Galvan, our Spanish pastors, uh, Stephen and Emily Cassio are our assistant pastors, and, and they help in many different ways, and then Jesse and Bethany, uh, the associate pastors, and then my wife is going to come as well, and they're going to pray and ask God's blessing on every one of these workers, these men. You make your way around. God, we're asking right now that you would touch this couple. God, we thank you for a covering that's going to come upon them, a grace of God for this time in their life. God, I thank you right now that you're going to touch this mind, that everything from the past that would allow there to be fear is going to leave right now. God, I thank you for a clarity and a confidence that's going to come. God, I'm asking right now that you would touch our brother. I would say unto you tonight, my son, that I'm giving you a fresh wind, that the past has remained in the past, and what I'm doing tonight is a fresh work. I'm rebuilding situations in thy life. No doubt that you are going to face once again, that you are going to pass this time because you're leaning upon me. You have leaned upon the flesh, but now you're leaning upon the Spirit. And I brought you back to this place because I'm going to cause you to rise up over this. I'm going to cause you to break through, to be fruitful, to be used by God. Put your confidence in me and not your flesh and know that this is in my divine timing that I'm going to use your life, I'm going to refresh you, uh, and you're going to walk in my calling for thy life, thus saith God. We thank you right now. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.
praise the Lord. Father, we thank you right now for your anointing, God, and your grace. Thank you for our brother, God. I know that only Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. We heard about a race this week, and uh, it's like you began with small steps, and then it's like the wind of the Spirit got a hold of you. You were running faster and faster, and then he began to like it, it, it almost panicked you where God's taken you. It's gone so quick. It's like, it's like you're amazed how far God's taken you. And it's just, it just caused your steps just a little bit. God's got, there's, there's barriers that I can see you're now going to begin to leap over. There's a new dimension going to come to you in this race, brother. You prayed for it. You just, it, it, it's, it's happened so quickly. This growth in you, you're aware of it, and it just shocked you for a little bit. God said, no, 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 that's me. I've got now, I'm going to cause you to start leaping over things. Father, thank you right now for the anointing and the grace and the blessing, God. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Praise God. Let's pray for the hearts. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, I cover Chris and Paula Hart, their children, God, their ministry. God, I pray that you would overshadow them. God, I cover them in the blood of Jesus. I break every curse against them. God, I loose the kingdom of God. Give him a new confidence, a new dominion. Bring an anointing, oh God. Bring fruit that remains. God, you hear the heart cry. And I'm asking you, God, to answer them with great grace and dominion and power. Chris, I know you already know this. Um, I've had the privilege of working with you since you were a convert and a disciple. But in the gospel, the Bible says that when the disciples heard Jesus pray, they said, teach us to pray. And they, he gave them what we know as the Lord's Prayer. I think it's more the disciples' prayer. And I believe that it has ingredients. And I felt like God spoke to me about the one ingredient that he wants me to speak to you. And that is, thy kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And I know you already pray with authority, but a, a unique role that you're going to fulfill, and this is true for you as well, Paula, is that you're going to pray down the kingdom of God. You're going to pray in command. You're going to take dominion, and you're going to insist that all hostile and adversarial spiritual powers and curses be vanquished. God's kingdom come, God's will be done on earth, right here in this ministry as it is in heaven. It's establishing the kingdom of God. I know you already know this, but I, I believe God spoke to you. I want you to, to, to put it into turbo. You have an authority. You are an ambassador. You are an armor bearer. You are a senior minister of the gospel, and you're going to cover this church. You're going to cover this ministry. You're going to cover your pastor, but I want you both to have a new authority and a confidence and a boldness in your prayer, not only for the converts and the fruit of your own family. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, a dominion, God. I bind the works of darkness. I break every curse. Every stronghold will be vanquished. God, fill my brother and sister with a new authority, a new confidence, a new dominion. Show them, God, the fruit of their prayers every day, God, in Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen. Praise God, praise God. Father God, we come before you right now. We believe you for powerful anointing, God, a pastoral gifting above and beyond what has already been experienced, God. I believe you, Lord God, for leadership mantle, the power of God moving through his ministry, shaping men, touching lives, transforming nations through this man's labor. Bless this woman, Lord God, and overshadow her. Heal her body and show yourself mighty, God. Uh, undertake for her, Lord God, uh, and show her that you uh, indeed have her life in your hands. Uh, oh, yes, Lord God. Uh, Diego, you set out many, many years ago with one intention, and that was to please God, no matter where. You would serve God anywhere, 
but you would serve God. That has been your singular ambition as long as I've known you, is I want to please God, and God wants you to know that you please him. You're a servant, and you please God. Kelly, you got to know that God has his hand on you. Amen. He's got power for you. And he's going to do a, a, a supernatural work for you. You're going to see it come to pass. Lord, seal it. I believe it right now. In Jesus' mighty name, cause your hand to rest upon them. I pray it. Father, we lay hands, God, for a fresh anointing on this couple. Stephen and Emily, God, as they serve in this church, God, as they are armor bearers for their leadership and pastors. God, you have raised up a faithful man, and you have promised that faithful men and women shall abound with blessing. I'm asking you, God. Put your hedge of divine protection around their life, not only to protect them uh, from things from without and fiery arrows from fired from without, God shall not penetrate them, but God, that you're going to cause a cultivating, a rich um, uh, resources to be cultivated within that hedge that are going to accelerate. And even like, oh God, the vine of Joseph that ran up the wall and over, over ran the wall, I'm asking you, God, as I sense this man has a servant's heart, which means he has a loyal heart. God, that is the currency of heaven that you are pleased with, that purchases, God, promotion and enlargement and favor. I'm asking you, God, as this man, you've heard him cry in your ear, give me my uh, pastor's spirit, my pastor's heart, enlarge me, God, open my eyes to behold wonderful things in the word of God. And yea, the spirit of the Lord would say unto you, my son, I have heard your cry. I've even seen your tears. I've even um, heard um, the times that, that you are uh, tossed and disturbed um, by your own inadequacy. Um, and yea, I would tell thee uh, uh, not to look at those things, but to look to the Lord thy God, the Savior, who is able to make up, he's able to gift, um, he's able to enlarge uh, your steps under you. Um, and even as you have sought um, the gifting of God, not for yourself or for your own glory, but that you might strengthen this ministry and that you might be a great blessing unto the people of God in Prescott. And I have heard your cry, and, and I will uh, promise you this, my son, that if you'll step out to serve him, you that have been faithful in things little in times past, and I will reward you with greater things, line upon line, here a little and there a little. And be alert, be um, uh, uh, urgent in your spirit, and I shall open things things before your eyes and cause you to behold wondrous things from the word as you seek me, thus saith God. Bless them. Bless this couple, this marriage, their ministry, their prayer life, God, their spirit in this church. In Jesus name. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. God, we ask you tonight, uh, God, to move upon this couple. We thank you. God, for their life, God, their service, uh, God, in times past and going forward, God, I pray uh, you would continue to equip them, God, I pray, uh, God, I'm asking you right now, God, uh, for wisdom, God, for insight and revelation to continue, oh God, uh, I pray, God, you would bring along uh, co-labors, uh, God, upon them to help them, God, to, oh, to lift up their hands, God, to strengthen them, uh, even when they're weak, I pray, God. Uh, God, you would make strong their hands, oh, God, I pray. Uh, oh, all that you do, God, and they labor for you, God, do it. Uh, to your glory, we thank you. You know, Jesse, I, from one assistant to another, uh, Pastor <laughs> Stevens was just saying that, but the reality of it is it's so true because we watch you. We watch you, man, and, and it's so powerful, and I think it's been said, but I just want to bear witness uh, that, uh, you know, Paul said, I have no one like-minded. 
And when he said that, you could feel the cry of his heart to think, I may have a lot of people or men even, but no one like-minded. And what it is, is a, it's a heart, man, and it's a spirit. And assisting is the right spirit. And it takes the right spirit because you're privy to so many things. And I've known you in the church and outside of the church, and you've kept so much uh, uh privy things close to your chest and close to your heart, and you've carried this ministry with dignity. And I want to tell you, I've, I've listened to some of your Sunday schools, and, to, and you're a great teacher, but you teach us so much by the life you guys are living. And we watch you, and the impact is literally worldwide. And we are very grateful for your lives. And I'm gonna, we're going to believe God to fill every gap and every need. You've asked God, God, I want to see more. I want to see uh, what I see in my pastor. I want to see the, the level of discipleship uh, and just the stirring to go and to, and to do the things of God, this pioneering spirit that is in you. Listen, God is doing it. He's going to continue to do it. And there's an acceleration across the fellowship because of your lives. Hallelujah. God, I thank you by the blood tonight. God, we thank you for this couple. God, I pray. Oh, God, fill every need. God, I pray. Heal every hurt. God, every word, every doubt till we cast it down, even right now, by the Holy Ghost. Thank you for him. In Jesus' name. Here you are again. <laughs> I want to ask you to stand with me. And uh, I've said this before. I've said it with uh, Pastor and Sister Mitchell. I say it again. Um, the weight of the fellowship. Uh, no one here knows all that this couple carries. And your prayers uh, tonight, when you pray in the morning, when your own prayer closet, your prayers many times are the difference. So I'm going to ask you to join with me tonight. We want to pray. Uh, I personally believe uh, 2024 is going to be an incredible year for our fellowship. I felt it. I felt it like a tsunami. And I'm, I'm giving a word uh, to pastors, like a tsunami wave that's sweeping. And it's, it's nothing can stand before it. It's sweeping over cities, it's sweeping over nations, uh, and in this tsunami wave of the Holy Ghost, uh, it's sweeping in converts and disciples, uh, and God has given you a supernatural wisdom and anointing of your Father uh, to harness this wave, to give direction to this wave, uh, to give a word spoken in an absolute due season to this wave of revival that's going to sweep across nations and continents. Um, I want you to pray with me. Father, by the Holy Ghost, by the Spirit of God, Yeshebo Ramama Sandaya, God, I pray a supernatural grace uh, triple, quadruple portions of anointing from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. God, comfort and strength upon Lisa, grace upon her as she surrenders her husband unto the work and the will of God. God, I draw a bloodline around them, a bloodline of protection, no weapon formed against them, no word spoken against them, no demonic Thought, um, no demonic fiery darts shall be able to touch them. God, we thank you for them. We thank you for them, God. Bring it to pass. I pray in Jesus' name. Shiva Levo Rebo God, we thank you, Lord. Amen. Pastor Greg, I don't know if you feel this or not always, but Satan has had a strategy to try to instill fear. We all view you as strong in faith, and you are. But the strategy of hell has tried to sow fear, to neutralize and slow down and hinder the progress of God working in your life. But the Lord would say, my son, yea, I have built a hedge around you, saith the Lord, and I have fought battles for you that you know not of, saith God. 
For when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Lord your God has raised up a standard against him. And yea, the Lord would say, your life is surrounded by the standards that I have set to oppose the, the strategy of hell, saith God, and yea, I will expand. For God has not given us a, a spirit of fear, but a power and of love and of a sound mind. And yea, the Lord has gifted you to instill and to inspire men to believe me uh, for supernatural power to work through their lives uh, and through your counsel and your faith and the crusades uh, and your ministry and the conferences. uh, A supernatural fire and dimension of power uh, shall be emanated through your ministry throughout the fellowship uh, and throughout the world. uh, And has Pastor Mitchell demonstrated love? Uh, Yea, I will demonstrate my love through your life in compassion for people, uh, in a willingness to help those who can do nothing for you, uh, those who are uh, in confusion, uh, whose lives have been shattered and broken and have no hope. uh, Yea, the Lord your God will give you a love and a patience and a compassion uh, to put broken lives together. uh, And yea, the Lord your God would say, I have given you power, love, uh, and of a sound mind. And the sound mind that I give you, saith God, uh, will stabilize all those around you uh, in an atmosphere of confusion and assault uh, when things are going away, saith God. Uh, yea, I will give you a sound mind and that sound mind will be imparted uh, to those around you and I will lift confusion wherever you go, saith the Lord your God. Uh, for I have not given a spirit of fear, uh, only power and love and of a sound mind, saith the Lord your God. Oh, Pastor, the word of God says that a faithful man is going to abound with blessing. And just as you have uh, entered into that ministry, uh, you didn't seek it. It wasn't by any kind of design or conniving of your own. God ordained you. You absolutely, if any of us in this place should have the greatest confidence that God raised you up and put you where you're at. And I have a good word. I feel it's a smile from heaven for you. And that is that just like you have mentioned numerous times how surprised you were, we heard that uh, this last uh, fantastic 30-session lesson on, on, on memorial stones was you caught you by surprise. It wasn't premeditated. God wanted me to tell you something. He knows that you're a worker. You're not a shirker. You're always a man that's uh, prepared many, many steps ahead. And you outwork almost most of us, if not all of us. But God wanted me to tell you that just as he delighted you by dropping a handful on purpose on you, don't allow the pressures, your ministry has such high demand, and the devil wants to get things, you know, rocking and rolling and pressure and stress. God says you have absolutely the right to come before the throne of grace and say, God, just like you blew my mind and dropped a handful on purpose for me, there's going to be some key pivotal points, some key crossroads where God's going to just blow your mind, and it's just going to be supernatural inspiration that's completely wasn't occurring to you, but it's from heaven, and heaven's going to do some downloading and some special times, even in your sleep, even in some times where you're brushing your teeth or taking a walk, walking the dog. I don't know if you have a dog, but God's going to blow your, blow your mind. And he just really impressed me to tell you, he's smiling at this. And he said, he said, you and him, you and him are going to have a good, a good laugh about this. He's going to drop some hand, handfuls on purpose on you that is going to really bless and help your ministry. God, in its time, accelerate, enlarge, refresh this couple. We need this couple, God. Refresh them with Holy Ghost and living water, God, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise God. Thank God for His goodness. Amen. I I am so excited at what God is doing in our fellowship. And it's such a privilege to be able to be a part of it. I'm so grateful for all of you. Together, we are reaching the world. 
And I'm believing. God bless you. Be dismissed. Be safe. Six months from now, we're going to do it again. God bless you. Amen.